defend yourself! Stay low, stay low. Show you the mechanical offset with this red dot. So I'll be I'll do this shot aiming right at the A zone of the head. So ignore this one, but check out this guy. I was putting my dot essentially right up there. That's the offset of the hold I have with this particular setup. To put it right on his head, I am aiming about that much higher above his head. So my dot. It's essentially up here. <laughs> you can see how big of a difference that is. That's like one shortcoming of the carry handle optic, but you just gotta train it. It's literally retro ass tech. Listen, I know you're on the toilet. I know you're drinking your food, eating your beer. Feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to like and subscribe. I enjoy your comments. I, you often ask, how does you know I'm on the toilet? Well, where do you think I read the comments from? So get down there, leave a comment. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, The Talking Balaclava. Today we're going over a gun that I have done before in the channel, and the reason I want to do it is because, well, I can. And I love this gun very dearly for what it represents to me personally. Now, before we dive into the gun, let's go over the gear. Uh, real quick, the gear I'm rocking is gonna be the Alice belt. You've seen it before already, and you're gonna see it again, but it's one of those pieces of kit that I had to build out. It's got mismatching colors of OD green, and I love it, and it's fantastic. I added the uh, good old trusty two World War 1911. This is a Colt 1911. There's a video on it I can link. Uh, it'll probably pop up in the tab somewhere over here, maybe over there, I can't remember which side, but it, it should show up. This gun is uh, it's a workhorse man, and I, I wanna say, from what I was told, this one was made in 1913. I could be wrong, yet again, don't, don't trust me. I'm gonna do that where it's a ball club on the internet. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. If you haven't noticed, I got my dummy grenades in here, just in case, uh, in case you gotta throw, some, throw them at some dummies. That was an awful dad joke, I am so sorry. The Alice kit to me personally, I don't know if I'm setting mine up wrong, but I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, after wearing it for a bit now, it like the, like the range of motion for my legs, it feels like it interacts with it, like on my hips. Maybe I gotta move my stuff around a bit better. But I got the butt pack on it. Well, they're storing some stuff on my butt. I don't know. I got my canteens, my pistol. Typically, uh, what you saw with Alice kit is that a lot of times guys didn't really rock a pistol. Uh, as an infantry fighting role, a pistol isn't that stellar in a, in a huge combat battle space. Um, typically like reserved for like officers and stuff like that. So, but for the sake of YouTube, <laughs> we can we can do whatever we want. So that's the fun part. But let's talk about the gun. But before we talk about the gun, a real quick word from our sponsor, gentlemen. This video is gonna be sponsored by Apex Gun Parts for all your apexing and gun parts needs. Head on over there. Let them know that I sent you. Ask for a hug and a kiss, and tell them that your parents neglected you and didn't show you enough love. It may weird them out. It may not. At best, they may feel bad for you and give you a discount. Any which. Another sponsor is going to be Ghost Print Tactical. They are a 3D printing airsoft parts company up in Canada. Now, now these parts may not be for everybody out there, but this is an option that exists for you on the market. Surprisingly, this isn't like your typical, um, I 3D printed this in my garage. The, the dude that owns this company has like a half a million dollar printer that he prints this stuff on, and I legit try to break it a lot. I haven't been able to break it yet. <sighs> if this was someone's head that I stomped, they'd send me to jail for like ever. Now, Dive into the gun. So, like I was saying earlier, I have done a video on this particular firearm before. The reason I want to come back to it and talk about it is, well, I think it deserves just more light of day, right? Retro guns has still been the hotness for a while, and uh, they're always fun to talk about, look at, and go over. Now, so this particular build is inspired by what we saw the Delta guys using in like the late 80s. 
uh, to 90s realm, okay? So those high-speed Delta guys, they're typically issued Colt 723s or 727s. Um, to talk about this a little bit and get in depth is I'm gonna throw some numbers at you. So I bought Larry Vickers uh, retro guide and he has some good pictures and discussions on the Delta weapons of what he used and what, of course, you know, the Gothic Serpent guys would be using in Mogadishu in the 90s. Now, this particular firearm is a inspired by the Delta guys. This is not a perfect clone, so that's a big disclaimer. Now, and again, no expert on the history, but I've done some amateur level research, but it still may be wrong. So if I do mess up anything, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm sure you guys won't fail to do that. So working tip to butt real quick, we'll do it pop a thumb style. We've got a Surefire 660 on a Weaver mount. Now, this is a legit Weaver mount. I know on my Blood Diamond build, I talk about how I have a... Uh, uh, faux weaver mount to save money because I have to grind it to fit it between the gas tube and the barrel. This one's legit and it's got a little bit up ahead on the barrel. Can this affect your point of impact? Sure. Uh, will this affect it if your gun's running a full auto and doing a lot of uh, fire? Uh, sure, you know, it could. Uh, I haven't done too much full auto with this particular firearm. I have thrown the upper on some fully automatic lowers and I haven't noticed too much POI shift. But then again, I wasn't doing a heavy amount of mag dumps. Now, it's not particularly what this rifle is designed for. It's a surgical type rifle. You know, the guns that they were using, they would have been using probably, you know, 14, five, 16 inch type rifles. So it's it fits within the realm. It's almost maybe like an inch and a half too long, you know, for some of these guys. And this is of course just in semi-automatic. Typically what you see with professional groups, uh, you know, professional law enforcement, military groups, is they typically run most of their weapons in semi-automatic, as well as, you know, your standard infantry group. Because out distance you're not going to be hitting a lot of targets with burst fire right it's just that's that's the role safe for the guys that have belt fed weapons it's not this is not what it's designed for right so it's designed for a little bit more accuracy and potentially keeping heads down when you can okay so that's not what it's designed for now it's got a pressure pad taped up to here i haven't had too much issue with uh, with the heat affecting the pressure pad at least not to my knowledge why well, still works just fine you can see it on there you go wow candela and moving back we got the aim point 2000 now this aim point 2000 of course i snagged this bad boy from ebay and it's actually a really cool red dot i got it zeroed it's using on the vortex rings i want to say it's the one inch tube or the 20 millimeter tube um I may asterisk that in too. It's gonna to be on a weaver rail. And that pretty much covered the parts except for the ready mag over here. This is a ready mag mark one. To release the mag, you push down on that tab right here and it releases your mag. Now this is great for, I'd say in my opinion, CQB stuff. If you're expecting, you know, if you're that high speed Delta guy, which, <laughs> spoiler, I'm not. If you're going room clear and you're doing a lot of reloads, you need something real fast because you're working a engagement distance that is within like, you know, 25 yards you'd of course can quickly swap out a new mag because you don't have to fumble through your gear. You gotta think, the gear we have now, this is a fun little thought, the gear we have now where a lot of us, our modern kit, we run our plate carriers or chest rigs with a battle type belt. And on that battle type belt, we have our emergency reload, typically off our left hand, and it is a super fast reload. You've kind of seen our kit evolve to where people don't really run ready right mags or tape together mags anymore because there's no real need because you can pretty much almost reload just as fast from the belt line as you can from a ready mag. And you don't have any of the downsides of extra added weight onto your gun. So, I mean, if you're doing a long movement and you have an extra pound, you know, from a mag on your gun, that's extra pain you're carrying as opposed to weight that could be dispersed onto your body. But you got to think for the gear, you know, that they had back in the day, the Alice kit, the different type of older pouches. Fumbling your way into the Alice kit, you have to unbuckle it, you have to find the mag, you have to get it up. It takes a little bit longer, right? And they have to secure their gear so they're not losing all their mags all over the place. Because, you know, Murphy's Law is always in full effect when someone's trying to kill you. So a readily staged mag makes a lot of sense for the time given and that era that they're in. Now, I prefer the ready mag over Larry Vickers style where he taped together with 100 mile per hour tape two mags. So he taped together two mags using 100 mile per hour tape in cardboard because they used to have like the metal clamps together. And he was saying that the problem with the metal clamps is that the vibration translated through the mag into the other mag outside of the firearm would rock the 556 five, rounds forward. Right, and that's not good when you're going to do emergency reload and your bullets are out of alignment, right? It's going to cause uh, an issue. So he did the 100 mile per hour tape. Everyone knows and recognizes that from his Delta carbine. And that's also a good method. But the problem is once you are running out of, of an empty mag, you're still holding on to an empty mag onto the firearm and storing it somewhere on your body to me is inconvenient. To me, this is a lot better because the, you know, the mags aren't taped together, they're not committed together, and you can store them upon your body a lot more conveniently. And then of course, we got our canteen sling. Let's bug. 
And of course, we got our canteen sling right here, a cheap little sling I snagged on Amazon. Links for a lot of this stuff will be in the description down below. I think I built the Alice kit off Amazon too. Um, I know there's like the gun guys hate when we support Amazon, but it is super convenient for getting certain stuff very fast, which I did. I think that covers a lot of the kit. Now, let's talk about real quick the inspired by and what inspired this weapon. So, like I was saying, inspired by. Well, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that I took certain things from a history and applied them to this firearm. One gun that I love and I do plan on cloning would be the Delta Carbine that Larry Vickers made. It's that, it's that Colt 723. And what that is, it's an A1 or a C7 uh, carry handle upper, but it still has some of the modern features such as the, they had different buttons. They had the teardrop, the big button, the small button, but the uh, forward assist, right? So it has that and it has your brass deflector, but it has the A1 style rear sight. It looks very good. It looks very clean. Now I do love my A2, but it doesn't have that same look if you're going for the clone. And to be very, you know, uh, to, to kind of hit the nail on the head, the, the cloning crowd is very, they're very particular about their details. So you have to make sure your stuff is squared away. Now on Larry Vickers gun, of course, he had the uh, QXL dive light. There are guys out there that do repros of the QXL dive light. If you're gonna find one now, uh, good luck if you do. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a beer because apparently they're like rare as unicorn tears, okay? Now, the Surefire 660 came out in the late 90s. You can kind of see how much better it is than the, uh, the QXL dive light. That QXL dive light is this huge light clamped at the bottom of the gun and just looks kind of goofy, but it, is, it has a cool retro feel. You can see the advent of weapon tech getting better and better. So I decided, you know what? I had a good line on Surefire 660s when I built this gun. So I snagged a 660, threw it on, and then I had the Aimpoint 2000. So I figured it's, it's within that timeline, right? You know what I mean? Ugh. You could, have, you could have had, back in the day, right, some Delta guy who maybe had uh, an aim point 2000 and then was also using a Surefire 660, right? It is possible. And then, of course, you throw the ready mag on there as a nod to the Delta guys that started using them in the later 90s. So, you know, I, I do think that it's fun. It's not a perfect clone, of course. Now, this is just a pencil barrel. I've seen pictures where they had, you know, the, the 723 and then they had the pencil barrel, but Larry's Vickers models was the government profile barrel. Weird nuanced details. The movie kind of gets it wrong where everyone has like A2 rear sights. There wasn't the proper depiction of them having A1 rear sights. You know, Hollywood doesn't really care too much and the audience won't really know the difference. Not gun people won't, won't really know the difference, but like the actual gun guys, if you're watching this channel, you're like, oh yeah, you know the difference, right? So one thing I don't like about the gun is the mil spec trigger. Um, of course, that's easily changeable, but I do love the feeling. I do love the feel of the retro gun. Retro guns just have a certain feel to them and a certain soul that modern guns don't have. Um, I'll show you a quick comparison of this trigger versus like a modern trigger uh, that I'm running. We'll do a little eyes and ears, go hot real quick. Now it's not bad, right? So it's not terrible, but as far as like trying to shoot fast and burn it down, it's not necessarily the best. So here is a gun I'm gonna be reviewing in the future. This is a blackout defense rifle and it's got one of their triggers in it. Um, I'll link their triggers down below, but here you go. Marketing. Like I plan, I think what I'm gonna do to fix that, I may throw a Geisley or a blackout defense trigger in here and give a little bit more modern flair with the outward appearance of Retroness. I may also, of course, with rifle maintenance, update the bolt, bolt carrier, um, just making sure the internals are very good and squared away. This used to be, the rifle itself is a Colt AR-15A2, so it used to be a police rifle. And I got it at an auction house, and I was like, you know what, this is before I even had a YouTube channel when I got it. I just saw it and I was like, I have to have it. I don't know why, I just had this already draw towards the retro line of firearms. And so I wanted to snag it. I'm very happy I did because <laughs> retro firearm parts and stuff is very hard to acquire now. I don't know why. It's almost like YouTube is making them popular. Anyway, so that's just a fun little quick look at it. I love talking about this stuff. I love going over it because it is a really cool part of our history. It's fun when firearms have a story to tell. That's why we like these things. This is why we make YouTube videos about them because they have a story. You know, these are carried by very professional dudes. And I love about it is because the guys a lot of times that carry these, you know, those Delta guys are super forward thinking. And you look at the Delta guys of, you know, Gothic Serpent, they're running dual tube night vision on bump helmets. They got the, um, you know, almost like plate carrier slick setup type uh, body armor and vests with um, pouches on your person up here. They have all these different attachments. They're running red dots. They're running, um, you know, weapon lights. 
they have suppressors and so for the era that they're in it's like the early 90s it's like 1993 and they're years ahead they're doing stuff that you know we're doing now gentlemen if you enjoyed <laughs> this video feel free to like and subscribe leave a comment in the comment section down below your comments are a sacrifice to the youtube god a god of which who enjoys her retro rifles and larping on the flat range if you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel as well as merchandise. Merchandise is on the website. Everything, there's going to be links for anything you want to support down below in the description. So head on down there. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you all on the flip. <laughs>